Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss about the existing use of variables in two fields of mathematics which I've already studied. It is the use of variables in geometry and next one we'll be discussing about the use of variables in arithmetic. In fact, we have already studied that it's just kind of reinforcing that the variables are in need use in multiple disciplines of mathematics. Now the first example that I would like to take is finding out the perimeter of a square. So I first of all denote the perimeter as small letter p. p stands for the perimeter of a square and why do I say it as a variable? Because I'm, I want to find the perimeter of a square. It could be any square of any length and therefore because it is any length, we don't know fixed length, the length could be anything. So the square as you can see in this figure has used the letter L to denote the length and we are interested in finding out the perimeter of this. So can we come up with a rule to find out the perimeter of a square which is represented by the letter P using the concept of variable. So we will write P equals and then if you Remember, the way we find our perimeter is we start, take up a vertex or a point, let us call this point A and then we travel along the periphery of the square and just add up the lengths that we have traveled. So we travel from point A to point B, we cover a length L, then B to C, C to D and D to A back again and then we would have to add the four lengths that is L plus L plus L plus L or if I want to simplify it further I will write as 4 into L or 4 times L. So this gives us P equals 4L and this is what we find out a general rule for finding out the parameter of a square whose length is L. Now depending on the value of this L, the parameter will be given a number. So for example, if L is 4, when L is 4, then you know that the perimeter P is going to be 16 square units, whatever is the length that you are considering in. Now similarly, let us try to find out a rule for the perimeter of a rectangle and I am again using P to represent the perimeter and proceeding ahead. Now since it is a rectangle and we know that a rectangle has a length and a breadth but I don't know the values of length and breadth. So we just use a variable L to represent the length and we use the variable B to represent the breadth. And we just need to sum up the lengths of these sides. That's what we do. So we write perimeter P. By the way, you can use any other variable instead of P. It's, it's, it is just up to you. But I just select P because P is the starting letter for the word perimeter. It's just the sake of convenience. So P equals, now if we just label the lens and then we just travel along it. So we from A to B we cover L. From B to C we cover B. From C to D point we cover length L. And from D to A we cover the point or we cover a length of P or simplifying it further we cover twice of L plus twice of breadth or if we take this two outside we have twice of length plus breadth. So this gives us a general rule to find out the perimeter of a rectangle whose length is L and breadth is B. So you see this is how we have used the concept of a variable and the general properties of multiplication and addition for variables to arrive at a rule to find out the perimeter of a rectangle P. So this was the example of use of variables in geometry. Now let us try to see some more examples from arithmetic. and. For the time being, let us just consider the whole numbers, that is the numbers from 0 to infinity. You can just go on. It starts from 0. So now commutativity of addition. We have already studied this property and commutativity simply means what happens when we change the numbers, when we interchange the numbers. So let us take two numbers, for example, 4 and 4 added to 5, 4 plus 5. 
so this gives me 9 now what if I change the order of this number that is we add 5 plus 4 we still get 9 now can I use variable to represent this commutative property we can do what we can do is we can take up two variables to represent addition of two numbers so I can say that let a and b be two whole numbers okay it stands for whole numbers any whole numbers it can take on any value and now if I want to represent commutative property I would say that the numbers a and b would be commutative if a plus b gives me the same value as b plus a now what happens when a is 20 and b is 10 so a plus b is 30 and b plus a is also 30 therefore we can say that a plus b and b plus a are commutative so this is how we represent the commutative property for addition of whole numbers now let us see commutativity of multiplication for two whole numbers and again in this case commutative means interchanging the order of operations so when I say 5 multiplied by 4 gives me 20 what happens when I multiply 4 by 5 I still get 20 can we use the variables to denote this so again we can take two variables we will take a and b to represent any two whole numbers this is just to represent two whole numbers and then what we do is we just say that the numbers will be commutative under the operation of multiplication if a multiplied by b equals b multiplied by a that is we change the order and this is what defines the commutativity criteria for the whole number so as you can see that how we are concisely describing the property of a number commutative property for addition and multiplication of whole numbers just using variables it makes our job much easier and it comes like as a general rule which is applicable to all the whole numbers instead of just two numbers as in this case so now let us take one more example which is about distributivity of multiplication over addition so if you remember something like this we have 4 multiplied by 2 plus 3 what does this evaluate to so 4 multiplied by 2 plus 3 is nothing but 4 into 5 which gives us 20 that is another way of solving this so what we did is we solve this addition first and then we might multiply. multiplied but can we distribute this multiplication over this addition that is we simplify saying 4 into 2 plus 4 into 3 what does this give us so 4 times 2 is 8 and 4 times 3 is 12 and when I add I still get 20 now how do we represent this using variables so we since we are considering three numbers over here let us take three numbers a b and c to represent the whole numbers that we are considering here whole numbers so can I say that the distributivity of multiplication over addition can be described as a multiplied by b plus c equals a multiplied by b plus a multiplied by c if we satisfy this criteria then we can say that the numbers follow the distributivity of multiplication over addition so what is the key takeaway the key takeaway from this discussion is that the use of variables allows us to express the properties in a general and concise way general is very very important because it applies to the whole class of numbers that we are talking of and many times we would like to know what what is the general rule sort of thing and concise is like very small you don't need to do a lot of operations it's just this simple thing here that describes us the rule for distributivity so that that was our discussion on application of variables to multiple fields now let us just quickly summarize on what we learned about variables and end with what is the importance of variables so first thing is that the variable allow us to write rules and formulas 
in a general way. That's the first thing. Variables can represent unknown quantities, which is what we did earlier. For example, when we were trying to find out the length and breadth, we did not know the length of a square. So we just used a number L to denote it, denote the length of a square. And of course, you will find even more areas where we can use variables to represent unknown quantities. So the advantage of using variables to represent unknown quantities is that we can further develop methods of finding out this unknown quantities and which you will find is very very helpful in multiple situations in our daily lives. And the third point is that variables represent numbers. Therefore, we can form expressions using variables and study the properties of the variables. More on expressions of using the variables and the properties of these expressions will be discussed in the next lecture. See you soon.